This is Love Notes, Daily Devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Grace and peace to you. The value we want to examine today, the thing that guides our behavior as Christians and as a congregation, is extravagant generosity. Generosity stands at the core of what it means to be a good human. It stands at the core of what it means to understand this God, who we are told in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only son, uh, but he also gave creation, life, breath, sunshine, everything that you can name has been given to us. It is a generous God who then calls us to be generous as well. And not just garden variety generosity, not not just a, a couple of dollars in the offering plate or uh, a, a little bit of money to the, to the kids standing on the corner. But extravagant generosity. Generosity that does not know any limits. Because you see, when you know that everything comes from God, you can return it to God without fear. There's a story in John's Gospel, six days before the Passover, the Passover when Jesus would be the lamb who was given up. Jesus came to Bethany, one of his favorite places, and he goes to the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, as she seems to always do. Lazarus was one of those reclining with him. Uh, maybe he needed to lay down a little bit. It's probably traumatic to be raised from the dead. In the middle of all of the festivities, with the disciples gathered around, Mary comes. Remember, Mary is often the one who we think of as tending to Jesus and worshiping him, and this is no different. She takes a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard. Now, nard was a very expensive substance, an aromatic kind of substance. She anointed Jesus' feet. It was often with nard that they anointed the dead. She's anointing him for his death. The nard was aromatic, and when they anointed a dead body, it, well, kept the stink down. But it was very expensive. And as she anoints his feet with the oil, she wipes his feet with her hair, giving herself fully. Now, Judas Iscariot, who we know betrayed Jesus, asked the question, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and given the money given to the poor? That gives us an idea of how much money we're talking here. 300 denarii is... 300 days wages. It's almost a year of labor. Take your 1040 and look at your AGI, your adjusted gross income. That's how much NARD costs. Why wasn't this sold? Judas really doesn't want the money given to the poor. He wants it to go into the purse. Apparently, he's the treasurer of the group, and he skims. So he's looking out for himself. But Jesus says, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. There's an interesting thing in this act of generosity. It is directed to Jesus but it is for the benefit of the whole world. That's a model we should bear in mind. Throughout Scripture, the people of God are extravagantly generous because they're focused on God first, and that calls them to serve and give to their neighbor, whether it be Abraham offering hospitality to strangers by giving them a lavish meal. That is driven by the fact that well, God calls him to love neighbor. Over and over again, throughout the scriptures, people are generous 
not because they're good people, not because they have kind hearts, but because God has called them to be extravagant in their generosity. And here's the thing. You can't be extravagant in your generosity if you're doing it for your own purposes. If I'm making a gift to look good, there's a limit. If I'm making a gift so that the building will be named after me or a plaque will be put up for me, then I haven't quite got it. Extravagant generosity comes when I realize that everything I have came from God to begin with, and all I'm doing is giving it back. Extravagant generosity. It is what we're called to be, called to become, because it comes from a God who is extravagantly generous to us. Amen.